Today is Tuesday the 24th of November and I found exactly what I want for Spider Tank 3. Oh yes, this is what I wanted right at the start of Spider Tank 3 and I was lucky enough to spot this. It is a black house spider egg sac and it has just hatched. It's stunning. This is a fantastic find and the theory is the black house spider will take out red back spider so I've got to just bring Spider Tank 3 forward and carefully open the lid. Woo! The beep has been removed from this video, and as always, this video is highly educational. Beep, beep, beep. It was just yesterday, egg sac 10 hatched. Uh, egg sac 11 is there. I may hatch that early, but I will clean up things we don't need here. That is an empty egg sac there. I might need two tweethies because um, there's going to be spidlings everywhere. And the old black house spider egg sac, which sort of failed, that was in here right from the start. I'm just going to have to just tidy this up with two hands. Crikey's, I've caused a nightmare here. I've actually opened up egg sac 11, and it, it's way too early. And now the real challenge is to get these wonderful black house spider spiderlings. Hopefully they'll stick to their web, and I can just drag them across without causing too much of a ruckus. Okay and in they go yeah there's a couple of stragglers in that and i'll just tip them out nice and gently wouldn't want to hurt the little darlings okay well that was yesterday's uh, redback spider spidlings are there today's black house spider spidlings are there i really can't tell one from another just looking here I might get out the boroscope to see up a bit closer. That might tell a lot more than this camera here. I've got this very long proboscis uh, borocam attachment to the AU Pro 90. It's fantastic and it can get me right into the action in a nice stable way and it's going to pull off pictures that I can't do of conventional cameras. And the absolute magic of this boroscope is the quality of the image on the screen there. Uh, that's what makes it a real pleasure to use. I'm very curious to see the reaction between the new redback spidlings and these black house spider spidlings. It's going to be very interesting from here on. I think this becomes part of uh, part five. At the moment, inside, I'm actually editing together and just finishing off part three. But wow, I would have liked to have had these little black house spiders right from the start. I think this is going to really be a game changer in the spider tank three. Well, I certainly know what a redback spidling looks like, and the black house spidlings are a little bit different to look at. I'm not really seeing any argy bargy stuff at the moment. Mind you, redback spidlings, when they're very young, they tend to be fairly passive. But they don't stay passive for long. That's where there's a real mingling of redback spidlings and black house spider spidlings. Very difficult to say that one fast. And the spider tank here on uh, episode 5, nearly said week 5, but it's not week 5 because these aren't bound by weeks. It is um, the story of, of two cities in a sense. There's actually quite a few dead spidlings caught up in the web that's going down to the bottom of the spider tank and then down on the base of the spider tank. And this is the side I have the light on, all those little black dots there. Well, they're all little spidlings that have uh, been taken out along the way but the part that surprised me is the amount of spidlings that have passed away in the web and that really only happened over the last couple of days so i'm not exactly sure what's gone on there but whatever happened it happened very fast and right in the middle of screen and i'll try and keep it in the middle of screen is one of the largest of the red back spiders in this tank it's one that I've been keeping an eye on for a while, and I dare say it is one of the most deadly spiders in here. I'll be honest here, it has been fascinating to watch how the spiderlings operate without the harassment of mature redback spiders. But I tell you what, these black house spider spiderlings, well, they're going to really change the game in here from this point on. And on the boroscope camera there, at the moment, is egg sac 11. That was Barbie the redback spider's final egg sac. Those spidlings are very immature. I thought they would have been more mature than that by now. I'm going to uh, cover up the egg sac that's been opened up. I've got part of another egg sac here, and I'm going to place this 
on top of the egg sac which is there it's going to be a little bit of like a brain salad surgery okay you probably won't believe me I can pull this off I think I can pull off anything spiderific these days okay maybe let me get two hands onto this and I will close that egg sac back up okay with surgical precision I have put the top back onto egg sac 11 by using another egg sac case there it's sitting on top of the black house spider egg sac which is now opened up and hopefully that egg sac can develop to full maturity anything's possible okay we'll take a look at some ball camera footage and I'm going to step back a day and we'll take a look at egg sac number 10 opening and I think it's the first time I've had a good close look at the spidlings coming out of an egg sac and I can't imagine being packed in there of all your brothers and sisters it must be such a joy to get out of there and get a life and the spiders tend to go in all different sorts of directions I know one thing and that helps me make these videos is they are attracted to light and what I've noticed is that they will set up a very very fine web and those first few days or possibly week after coming out of an egg sac they don't seem to do very much at all they just seem to be sitting and waiting and with the new spiderlings venturing out it does set up vibrations all across the web network and it does trigger a lot of the other older spiderlings to start moving about as well as the balance of nature changes in spider tank 3. The youngest spiderlings come out and they're quite white in colour. Uh, the older spiderlings start to get a pattern around them and it's often very difficult to understand a male versus female when they're very young spiderlings. That starts to appear a little bit later on. But I'm sure the older spiderlings in the spider tank here have got a thought that is, hmm, I think the next breakfast, lunch and dinner has just arrived just in time. The spiderlings markings don't change that much if they become a male spider. It's the female that develops a black body and that distinctive red stripe. But you will see on the younger spiderlings here, which are a little bit more mature, there is a red hourglass marking that appears and that is actually on both the male and female redback spider. It's also something that you will see on the North American Black Widow Spider. But most times if you are looking at these spiders it's tricky to see underneath them in the way that they sit in the webs when you find them in the garden. Looking at the most mature redbacks in Spider Tank 3 at the moment, I think we're looking at a bunch of females. They seem to be the most settled in the tank in the sense they don't seem to be running around. But there are males here I'm sure about that and the males tend to be far more skitterish. And I'd be skitterish as well because I know those females are going to love to have the males for dinner at some time. Now taking a look at that very strange area where there's a bunch of dead redbacks caught up in web. I'm not exactly sure what's gone on there but it looks like they've basically died in the web. And now here's a female redback spiderling feeding on another female redback spiderling. And sometimes you'll see other spiderlings keeping quite close to this action because there's always a free feed on hand if you know what you're doing. But being able to grab a feed in Spider Tank 3 is actually very risky business. Once a spiderling has finished eating another spiderling they just drop the carcass to the floor of Spider Tank 3 and it's starting to be littered with the dead bodies of spiderlings. So it's always amazing how the ball camera exposes spider tank 3 in a very different way to the other times when I've done redback spider tanks. I couldn't imagine doing spider tank 3 without this very useful tool. Okay getting into the bulk time lapse footage from spider tank 3 in this episode I'll put red circles around points of interest and things you need to look at and at this time frame of the spider tank it's starting to get fairly messy. There's lots of melees and what is very interesting in the melees is you'll see a mass of spiders all going in for a feed and I've always said that one of the riskiest things to do in Spider Tank 3 is to be the spider who's going to be brave enough to pick off little brother or sister. But there always has to be a start of a fight and maybe the less risky thing to do is to 
well, let a couple of spiders fight it out and then come in and clean up with whatever scraps of food and things to suck on are left behind. What I seem to witness at this point in Spider Tank 3 is what's a major survival strategy? And it comes back to, well, what do you do in a fight situation? Do you stick with the fight or do you flee? I see a lot of spiders basically running away from situations. But if you're always running away from a situation, well, you're never going to get a feed. It has to be a point where maybe being the aggressor means you're the spider that will go on to live for the next week in Spider Tank 3. I've always had that thought that the most psychopathic and spider-rific spider is going to be the winner in Spider Tank 3. I can see into the future because I've seen what happens at the end because this is a very delayed upload. And maybe one thing I can say here is what happens up near the end is not what I was expecting to happen because it starts to get into a mode up near the end where... One of the biggest survival strategies is to hide from the other spider that's in the spider tank. In fact, up in the final months of the spider tank, I had to use a lure to bring the spiders out to see exactly who was in the spider tank. And that was important to do because they were very good at being recluse and difficult to find. They were certainly in there, but they were being very careful in staying in the spider tank because they must have worked out. Wow. If I make a move here, something's going to pounce on me. What is fantastic, and I was always fearful I was never going to capture it, because when I set up a camera on the spider tank, I really need the action to happen in front of the camera. All too often, the really important thing to see happens just outside of frame. I was very lucky that the final melee between the last two spiders is actually caught on camera. I was really fearful I wouldn't capture this, because... It could have happened in a recluse corner of the tank, but I have thankfully got that footage and as I said in a previous video on my channel, the last remaining spider in Spider Tank 3 does get released into the backyard and I think that had to happen because if you survive Spider Tank 3, you've certainly earned your release. Just thinking back to that webby area where there's a lot of redback spiderlings caught up and they've died in the web, I do think, well this is my theory, that some of the spiders basically die of starvation or they've got to a point where they need to shed their skin to grow and they basically don't have enough get up and go or energy to complete the next phase of growing up as a spider. And I think it's always important to remember this in relation to spiders is you might have hundreds of spiderlings come out of an egg sac but only a tiny percentage go through to become adult spiders. Now the strange thing about the male redback spider is it only lives for six to seven months and half of that time, roughly three months, is spent getting to the adult phase. And from what I've read about the male redback spider, it's an extremely small percentage of them get to live their full life. The male redback spiders really draw the short straw versus what happens with the female redback spider that goes on to live for a number of years. Okay, let's go back to the ball camera footage and I'm going to take a look at the black house spider spiderlings just after I landed the egg sac which had hatched into Spider Tank 3. That's what we saw at the start of the video. Now, to get your head around the black house spider spiderlings versus the red back spider spiderlings, the best way I can explain it is the black house spiders have no pattern, but they seem to have two colors. There's almost a black one and there's also a grey one. I'm not a spider expert. Maybe the difference in colours define male versus female. But once you get your eyes keyed onto the ones with patterns and ones without, that's the best way to say, well, that's a black house spider and that other one's a red back spider. Spidling, of course. I took a lot of footage of the black house spider spiderlings mingling with the red back spider spiderlings. I did notice the black house spiders tended to go for a wander, whereas the red back spider spiderlings tend to stay quite close to the egg sac after they've hatched. I was also looking very carefully to see if a more mature red back spider spiderling would come up and take advantage and have an easy meal with a black house spider spiderling. 
I couldn't see anything like that going on. There seemed to be some strange style of mutual respect as these two different spiders were hanging out together. And maybe these spiderlings don't perceive they're dealing with a different style of spider hard up against them in their same territory. But then again, as I've said before, when the spiderlings come out of the egg sac, they seem to be fairly passive. That wiring to basically go out and nab something for a meal starts to kick in after a couple of weeks. So it's very much the honeymoon period for the Black House spider spiderlings. What was also curious about them was the way they grouped together, and they're different to redback spiders. They had little groups, and I'll put red circles so you can see where the groups are. And they stayed up on the white ring, which is up the top of the spider tank, and from what I could see, they didn't like to venture away from their little groups of spiderlings. And this grouping together does persist in weeks to come, and that's very different to the way the redback spiders operate in Spider Tank 3. And I think up to this point I've failed to explain the time frame Part 5 encompasses, and that is the 19th of November to the 28th of November, and that's 2020. And the final takedown is some episodes away, and it happens on March 28, 2021. Shock. Horror. And maybe I'll finish this episode off by taking a look at a black house spider I found in the pool. I dare say it beats finding a funnel web spider in the pool. Just thinking about the black house spiders, I should show you one because we've seen the spiderlings. Here's one in the pool. Uh, they often get mistaken for far more dangerous spiders. But these are actually friends to have around the house. These are good spiders. They're not that big a spider, uh, but I suppose anything that's got eight legs and it's sort of dark colored, people are always gonna think about something far more serious. I'll just carefully scoop this little girl out of the pool. We're gonna have a look at her on the catcher there. Okay. Okay, there she is, uh, scampering about on the leaf catcher. Yeah, she's having a bit of trouble trying to climb it there. I might put her in a nice place to uh, to convalesce from here on. Maybe a common sense area to put her would be here. For some reason, mummy's turned all the tubs around and I'll release her here because this is redback zone and these spiders can take out redback spiders. There she goes. She's going to find somewhere to live. Lovely. With the cicadas screeching in the background, here's a very typical black house spider setup scenario. If you look carefully there, you can see some fairly messy web. They have got like an area where they reside within bricks or around windows or whatnot. They're quite reclusive. I can also see a black house spider egg sac there as well. And to completely finish off part five of Spider Tank 3, I'll do a little mini featurette of the largest spiders in the spider tank at this point. And these spiders are starting to set up a huge advantage over all the other spiderlings within the tank. To get to this size, these spiders have made all the right moves so far.